structural engineer, again, electrical plumbing engineer, for the uh, architectural staff, civil engineers, landscape architect, uh, go through the sites, buildings, and uh, develop this uh, report. Uh, so we're going to kind of go through some uh, general things. Uh, there's a whole lot more information that's been provided uh, to Barry uh, for him to review and to, uh, uh, to use in, in the future. Uh, but right now, we're just going to kind of use as a general information. What I would uh, I start by saying is uh, probably after going through everything, we really can narrow down the uh, priority items are, are probably down to three or four items as really the biggest items that uh, need to be concentrated on. Uh, and in general, that's your mechanical systems. And I think probably a lot of people know and realize that back a few years ago, you had uh, the boilers replaced in both buildings, which was a good uh, thing at that time. So they're in great shape. Uh, but you have a lot of mechanical units that are throughout both buildings uh, that uh, have been around for ages and uh, are not in good shape as well as some piping uh, that run throughout the building that uh, are leaking and causing some issues as well. So that's going to be one focus that we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, second focus will be accessibility. Um, you have some accessibility issues throughout, mainly at this building, probably more so than even the elementary school, but the elementary school has some as well. Uh, but that goes from uh, your parking lots all the way to and into your building. And that's really more of a, an American with Disabilities Act uh, uh, issue rather than a code issue because until you start doing the work, uh, the code really doesn't come into effect. But uh, something to, to be concerned about and something to address as you move through and start looking at things that need to be done. Uh, the third item I'll call is uh, safety issues. Uh, not a lot of, but there are a few safety issues. Uh, Code-wise, you don't have uh, really much in the way of building code because, once again, until you start doing any work, do you really need to uh, uh, take care of some issues that would be affected by the building code itself. But there are some safety issues that uh, we'll talk about. Once again, there's some that uh, uh, was it uh, addressed as far as the elementary school that, that Jamie will get into when she talks about the elementary school. The fourth is really the natatorium. And uh, if anybody's been in the natatorium uh, recently, you know that um, it, it's, uh, it's seen uh, uh, past days that are probably better than they are right now. Um, so uh, fortunately, the, uh, the lining, the, the interior of the pool itself was done about uh, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, that's in decent shape, but a lot of the other conditions of the natatorium are, are not. And we'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of use the executive summary here just as a, a brief outline, and we can get into more and more detail as we, uh, as we go forward. Hopefully this will work from here. This just gives uh, information of who uh, was involved with the, uh, the uh, report and the inspection and going through the building and who we talked to that point in time. Just some means and methods of, of how we kind of uh, estimated and how we kind of looked at things. Uh, one of the things, is, as this report shows, is pretty much estimates of, of everything that we identified. Um, so there's a, a large cost estimate that's involved with the report that we won't go over in detail today, uh, but is available um, and very, very has that as well. Uh, but as anybody that's been involved with uh, even just going to your local hardware store or anything else will know that uh, costs of materials are going up and up and up. So estimating this time is, is really kind of difficult. Um, and we had a, uh, an estimator who I've known for probably 30, 35 years who's been in the business uh, estimating for construction companies who has his own estimating company, uh, put the estimates together. Uh, as best he can, but obviously there's inflation. You know, we know that uh, you know what was in the papers uh, more recently showed us seven percent inflation. Um, does that continue, or is that a, a decline over the next year? Uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but we've tried to build in some inflationary numbers there in that regard. The other part of that, as far as estimates, is uh, any hazardous materials. And usually, when we talk about hazardous materials, we're talking about uh, asbestos materials. Um, and uh, in some cases, there's lead-based paint, and also there's sometimes there's PCBs in 
generally what that is in, it would be in your, your caulking more times than not. So we've seen that in occasionally in, uh, in caulking around windows and doors and everything. There, the, there was a period of time where PCBs were included in some of the caulking material. So that, that is not really addressed here. We, we weren't uh, hired to do anything with that, and that is really kind of a separate thing. And I know the district in the past, whenever projects uh, were, were done, uh, were, uh, they dealt with a gentleman here in, in uh, upper PA that dealt with asbestos materials and, and hazardous materials. So that would have to be looked at it as well. Um, I don't know how much they have, but you know, every building seems like they have some. So, uh, the site here at this building, um, and we'll start with this building. Um, oddly enough, I mean, you have ramps um, in the front, you have ramps down to the district office, um, and, and neither one of those really are truly accessible if you go by the handicap uh, requirements that are put out by the American with Disabilities Act and uh, with the, uh, the uh, building code itself. Uh, they do allow people, obviously, to get to those levels, but the uh, ramps themselves are not at the right uh, uh, pitch to uh, make them completely accessible. You also have areas where you have water intrusion down at the lower level occasionally, um, and, and that's caused some problems. You can do some regrading that might be able to take care of, of that as well. Uh, so your concrete uh, walks and parking lots are in pretty good shape. Um, there, uh, there is a slab that goes out, I believe it's to the uh, to the auditorium on the, on the uh, uh, far side over here uh, that could use some work as well uh, over by the uh, football field off the front of the building. So there's there's some issues, not a lot, but there's some uh, uh, site issues. I guess the other thing I would mention is your track itself, uh, which once again was done about uh, a dozen years ago, maybe 15 now at this point in time, is getting at the end of its life as well and, and needs to be addressed and, and be, be replaced. Uh, we've done a number of tracks over the years. Uh, generally, uh, most of the time, they get cleaned and resurfaced about every seven to 10 years. And I don't believe this track has ever been uh, cleaned and resurfaced. Uh, so it's, it's going on its life at this point in time and uh, probably needs to be replaced. Um, the football field um, is in good shape. Uh, it has great drainage. And, and, uh, it also uh, gets uh, plenty of water, so uh, you know that there's no issues there. Um, and then uh, the bleachers themselves, um, there's some issues with the bleachers. Uh, there's some foundation issues below, nothing that's critical, uh, but there's things that should be done over the years and can be addressed by uh, some, some structural work at that point in time. Um, there is a number of chain link fences throughout uh, the site uh, that should be addressed. Uh, many of them are um, you know, rusted and uh, might be bent, might be uh, slightly uh, not vertical, that type of thing, uh, and that should be addressed as well, as well as some light poles are, are having some issues. None of these things are critical compared to some other things uh, like we've talked about already. Uh, so they need to be looked at in time, uh, but in relationship to everything uh, as well. So on the general construction side, uh, we looked at uh, pretty much everything throughout the building. As I said, uh, Jamie and the team uh, went through everything. Uh, as we know, the, the, the roofs on this building, uh, there was quite a bit of work done in the last couple of years. Uh, so it's in pretty good shape with the roofs. Uh, so uh, that's good to see. You've had problems in the past with the roofs, so uh, they're good now. The one area that still needs to be addressed is the old planetarium, uh, which has a shingle roof on it uh, that is really pretty well wore out needs to be addressed whether you take that out or whether you uh, just reshingle it. It's not a small, it's not a big area, so it's probably easier to just go ahead and reshingle that roof sometime in the future. Uh, you have some uh, localized repairs and, and damage for interior finishes, not a lot, uh, but a few areas here and there that, that uh, can be done. And they can be done over time and uh, not something that you need to really uh, concentrate on uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, windows throughout your building, uh, one of the things that we, we did point out is um, the classroom windows, so they're pretty, actually in pretty good shape. One of the things that we do recommend is that they actually be uh, big enough, if you look at uh, replacing them in the future time, uh, make them big enough so that they could be used as a secondary exit out of the classroom if something happens and, and, and people need to 
get out for whatever reason. Uh, they're pretty small right now as far as the operable portion. Uh, but as far as the windows themselves, they're, they're in pretty good shape. There are some minor things that can be taken care of. Classroom doors, um, the doors themselves have issues. Obviously, uh, a lot of them are old in this building. Uh, but one of the things that we did see that uh, you know you might want to take care of is um, there's handicap accessibility, there's hardware issues uh, that you might want to look at and, and take care of as well. Um, casework, a lot of the casework is old, uh, can be done, you're still usable, so um, you can push that down the road some other times. As I mentioned, uh, the restrooms themselves, uh, accessibility, that's where your accessibility issues really come into play. A lot of the restrooms are not fully accessible, and so some rearranging and some redesign of those restrooms in time is something that should be uh, looked at. Um, let's see where we leave off. Okay, uh, handrails. There's a number of, of issues with the handrails. Not on big, um, but there's some small things here and there. Some of them are a little bit low. Some of them don't have the extensions that um, are required for uh, accessibility. Uh, those types of things. Uh, the basement level and obviously your upper level here in the library are not accessible by an elevator in any means. Uh, so that should be looked at of how those spaces are used and whether any accessibility needs to be provided by the elevator. The auditorium, um, as I mentioned, um, what we really recommend after going through and looking at it uh, from uh, our structural engineer, our mechanical engineer, our side, everything is really a wholesale renovation of the natatorium. Um, and then the question becomes what to use it for and what to do with it, but if you use it as a, as a natatorium, as the pool area, you really need to spend some time and spend some, uh, some uh, interest in really a complete renovation of the natatorium. Uh, there is no dehumidification uh, system in there, as most people know and understand, when you have a pool interior, it gives off an awful lot of moisture. That moisture has caused a lot of problems uh, with the ceiling systems, other mechanical units within the building and that space, uh, the lighting, electrical system, and so on and so forth. Um, the windows in that space are not in very good shape as well. Um, the bathhouse is an old bathhouse that's wooden, and the moisture has gotten to that. And we really recommend that that bathhouse gets teared down and completely rebuilt, however it's being used. Stays in the auditorium, they can be reused, and, and, and you can build a new uh, locker room, bathhouse in that area uh, in that regards. We also looked at what other options we can use the auditorium space for, and uh, one option that came and that was discussed when we talked to the administrative staff is that this building could use another gymnasium. Uh, so, can the auditorium be turned into a, a another gymnasium, maybe as the main gymnasium with the other ones becoming a secondary gymnasium. And that's a possibility. Uh, they, they utilize the same building, same roof line, same space. There is a floor level difference, as we know, of uh, about three feet, if I remember correctly. Um, but there's a lot of work that, that still would need to be done, if, if, even if it was a gymnasium. Um, obviously, you have to uh, take out the pool and fill the pool, uh, pour a new floor, uh, replace uh, all the bathhouse work into new locker rooms, but it's something that's doable. We've looked at that. We've uh, done a simple layout uh, to show that it does work, and, and the costs really are somewhat comparable um, in that regards. Um, so it's a decision that the district themselves need to look at and make. Do you keep going with the natatorium? The natatorium itself uh, takes a lot of maintenance uh, over the years and continues to uh, be maintained because of the moisture, everything that it gives off. A gymnasium is less maintenance over time period, but do you want to give up an auditorium? I know in other districts that we work with and uh, worked on a lot of the auditoriums, one of the things that they look at is what other uh, pools are in the area, how close are they to service the community that you're in. And that's one of the things that you may want to look at uh, when you're trying to decide that is whether to keep or not to keep spend the money for an auditorium or do something different with it. So um, that, that's a decision that uh, you need to look at any time. Um, the kitchen equipment, we had our uh, we had a food service uh, uh, specialist come in and look at both kitchens in the buildings and uh, 
go through them. A lot of your equipment are is old, um, hasn't been replaced in years, um, but are still usable. And eventually, in time, you're going to have to uh, replace uh, a lot of the equipment in both buildings. Um, but uh, one of the things that should be addressed is the hood at both buildings to get them up to uh, the correct uh, code requirements uh, for a hose for what you have underneath. So that should be addressed in the near future as well. Um, plumbing wise, uh, as we said, the boilers themselves are in good shape um, and uh, the water piping, uh, some of the hot and cold lines, uh, we're recommending that uh, you do look at replacement of those piping lines. Ray has had some issues that he's had to address as far as some leakage over time and then they're original to the building and need to be, uh, be looked at as far as replacing the mains themselves. Once you get off the mains, you start going to the fixtures. They can be looked at uh, as, as a needed basis and as you start renovating spaces. If you are renovating a bathroom, that's when you can renovate it and do that piping off the mains themselves. Um, sanitary piping, uh, uh, once again, that, uh, that is old, uh, that's original to the building, and some of that should be looked at and replaced, being replaced. Uh, the pump station down in the boiler room, um, I know race has some issues um, down there, and the pumps should be looked at and being replaced as well. Um, so, and then there's a, a sump pump system uh, that uh, takes care of water in the lower level. Uh, they're really the pumps at this point in time are kind of undersized or have a hard time sometimes keeping up when you have a lot of uh, rain and a lot of water that's coming down into that system and getting pumped out. So we recommend that that uh, pumping system itself be uh, uh, replaced with larger uh, pumps to take care of that capacity. On the mechanical side, um, basically what we're recommending is really a wholesale replacement of your, of your mechanical equipment. Um, most of the mechanical equipment are, is very old and there's been some issues with it. Um, there are some things like fans that are on the, uh, the roof um, that are fairly simple and when motors go, um, Ray and his team can take care of and, re and replace the motors as they go bad. But the mechanical equipment themselves, the rooftop units, the unit ventilators, etc., cetera, uh, really uh, should be replaced in the near future. With that, your control system, which is presently uh, what's called a pneumatic system, which is uh, basically an air compressor system that, uh, to control the equipment, uh, is old, the lines are old, uh, the compressor's old, and that all should be replaced with a new uh, digital control system, uh, which is uh, then be available to uh, the superintendent, uh, Barry and Ray, at any time you're able to go in and, and modify and, and uh, look at the systems and see how well they're working. Um, so we recommend that. Uh, the uh, uh, chilled water system, um, as mentioned here, is not connected to all rooms. Uh, it really is just nearing the end of its life and uh, really should be re uh, replaced as well. We looked at uh, what is the option of installing air conditioning in this building throughout. So that was one of the directives uh, that we were asked to look at. Um, so looking at uh, replacing the mechanical systems in this building, uh, we're somewhere in the neighborhood, I apologize, uh, about 3.8, 3.9 million dollars uh, to replace the mechanical systems in kind of what you have. To replace and add air conditioning throughout the building, there's a number of different scenarios our engineers looked at three or four of them, he said probably you could look at another 10 or 12. Um, but that would probably be another three million, maybe three and a half million on top of that original 3.8, 3.9 uh, to add air conditioning throughout the building as well. Uh, so there's a, you know, a decision that you have to look at. Do you want to uh, add air conditioning everywhere? Do you just want to keep air conditioning in the places you have now? Do you want to limit it to certain other areas? And not other areas, and that can be looked at as you go forward and move forward and start discussing uh, things in the future. On the electrical side, uh, the, uh, the electrical uh, system itself, 
uh, is in pretty good shape. Uh, one of the things that uh, is recommended is uh, uh, replacing the generator. Um, right now, it uh, uh, only handles uh, certain things, and there's other things such as making sure that all the coolers and freezers in your uh, your kitchen uh, are handled as well, so you don't lose the foods that are in there if uh, you lose power in the building. Uh, so that's one of the things that uh, recommended. And also the main switchboard that is in the building, uh, once again, it's, a, it's original, it's ancient. Um, Ray has issues with trying to find uh, parts uh, for that. Uh, so uh, one of the things that is recommended is that you do look at replacing the switchboard uh, downstairs in the building. Uh, your lighting throughout the building, uh, probably most of you know, is you're replacing lights within your own household. Most everybody's going to LEDs. Um, and we, we installed LEDs on the exterior over at the elementary school. Um, this building doesn't have much in the way of LED fixtures, and we do recommend that uh, you do, do at some per certain time in the future to look at that. Um, and that does come with some savings, obviously, by replacing and, and putting in the LED fixture. Um, and that would, that would help uh, your electrical consumption um, for this building. Um, your fire alarm system has just been replaced in this building, so you're in good shape there. Um, and, uh, and that's all taken care of this past summer, so um, that's good for, for here as well. So um, I'm not going to get into it with too much more detail. I think at this point in time, on the junior senior high school, unless there's questions. And, uh, if not, I'm going to turn it over to Jamie to talk about the elementary school.
thing to consider at the elementary school is all of the glass walls. The glass walls are in decent shape. They're not really in need of any repair, but there is sometimes people con would consider the glass walls to be unsafe in a school um, because they everybody within that room can be seen in, in the event of an intruder or, or whatever. So something that's just something to consider. There's nothing wrong with those walls, but just a thought to, you know, if you were thinking about safety within the school. Um, one thing that really needs to be addressed as far as safety goes is the stairs at, um, at the elementary school have very large openings, um, large enough that a kid could just fall right through um, at the guardrails. Um, and so definitely something that should be addressed you know, soon is to, is to make it so that those guardrails are safer for changes that we talked about with administrators. Yeah. Um, we talked about the kitchen equipment. Uh, there's a lot of the similar comments about the kitchen equipment as here at the high school. Uh, but one thing that our consultant also pointed out is that the kitchen at the elementary school is just huge. And so when, as you're renovating that space, using that space for something else could be beneficial. You can get more space out of Similarly to the high school, the boilers have been replaced, but the piping is original. A lot of the piping is leaking, so the water mains, we are recommending they be replaced. Um, and similarly to the high school, then you would just do the local repairs at the fixtures as you're doing um, renovations. And same with the sanitary piping. Um, the mechanical units, similar to the large mechanical units, are old and should be replaced. The chiller at the elementary school is also in poor condition and should be replaced. Um, the electrical is okay, but it's old and so maintenance is difficult on it. And uh, similar comments with the generator and similar comments with electricity, with the uh, lighting and then the the fire alarm system is also currently being replaced at the elementary school, so you should be good in that, that area. One of the things that the admission manager kind of shows up in here is um, one of the things that we looked at if it was a possibility that might uh, want to be considered um, is whether to make a, a middle school model here at this building. Um, and uh, there is room uh, in this building to do that if that was something that the, the district ever wanted to consider. Um, I know a lot of districts do that, um, but I just wanted to bring that up too, is, is that uh, could be done if, if uh, considered. So from there, we kept it short. Um, questions, there must be some. Like I said. Well, this building was, I mean, the old building was like 29, and this was 67. One thing we didn't mention, we also um, took a look, obviously, at the, the Litchfield's site uh, work as well. Um, didn't go into the building, but we did look at the site and we asked to do that. And the conditions, as you would expect, because obviously uh, it hasn't been used in quite a while, are, are poor over there. The asphalt and the sidewalks, et cetera, are, are in poor condition at this point in time. Can you pull back up? I just got the Yeah, I yeah, one of the, the things that we the, the gym, the gym. Yeah. 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 one of the things that uh, we look at a lot of times um, when in fact we're doing this at another school right now, uh, we've actually gone through their high school and their middle school and now we're doing it at the elementary school is um, rearranging the entrance so that all visitors actually have to go into the uh, office before they go into the building. Um, you know, unfortunately in this day and age we've got situations where we have to make sure we protect everybody. And so, you know, we've looked at it and are suggesting 
that you consider maybe putting another set of doors um, right in really at the intersection of the hallway and the vestibule itself that could be locked allowing or, or kind of forcing anybody coming into the building to go into the main office uh, checking in getting approval before going on, on into the building itself so that was one option that we looked at and then we also looked at what uh, you know what could happen with the additional space uh, or should I say all the space that's at the kitchen area right now because it is a large uh, space right now with a lot of kitchen equipment uh, so we looked at can we move the um, the kitchen we downsize the kitchen into a, a reasonable amount of space and then the area where the, the music area is uh, to the left of where you come in uh, to the main building and create a cafeteria there thus leaving uh, the gymnasium from being gym cafeteria and, and making that a full gymnasium at all times that obviously then uh, says what do you do with the, the music uh, and everything that's there and you know it kind of compounds do you end up with a middle school model here that will uh, alleviate the pod down there that you can move the, the music uh, down to one of those pods so there, there's options that could be looked at and that can be addressed um, one thing a lot of times uh, results in doing some other things as well so Other questions? Can't be that short and easy. <laughs> we tried to keep it simple for you, but there's a there's a ton of information um, that we provided, and uh, you know as as everybody looks at it, as uh, uh, Barry starts getting a, a building and grounds committee together and starts looking at uh, what the next steps are, um, we're glad to to assist to add more information, uh, explain. Uh, more details we need to a lot of times uh, the school district will ask us to, to sit in on those uh, for a period of time once they start kind of narrowing down the, the focus um, and that type of thing so we're, we're more than glad to do that and like I said we had a full team here of, of everybody looking at the whole building uh, our structural engineers uh, uh, Kuki structural engineer likes to get into these little spaces and look at every little odd and end thing so he comes up with a lot of of strange uh, little ideas and little things too as well and that's great because you you know pretty much uh, no stone is left unturned for you so um, it's pretty complete for you to, to look at what's all said from okay all right we're done Thank you. Thank you very much. oh you're very welcome all right. Thanks. Thanks. okay <laughs>